Hi, my name is Pavel Parol. Uh, I'm a solutions architect at Codelime. Uh, in this video, uh, you'll see in detail how services are implemented in Kubernetes uh, and how you can configure some aspects of their behavior, uh, such as external traffic policy and internal traffic policy. Uh, as you may know, uh, services in Kubernetes are implemented by kubeproxy by default. Uh, this applies uh, to the cluster IP, node port, and load balancer uh, types of service. Uh, this video is intended primarily for those who have a basic understanding of Kubernetes services and uh, know what kubeproxy is. Uh, if you are not familiar with these topics, we strongly recommend you to watch uh, our other video, which gives a brief overview uh, of the basics. Uh, specifically, uh, for the cluster IP service, kubeproxy performs load balancing for internal communication between different workloads running in the cluster. Uh, for the node port and load balancer services, load balancing is also provided for external connections. Um, let's look uh, at an example extract from a real node port service configuration made by kubeproxy. Um, kubeproxy is configured to work in IP tables mode. Uh, for this purpose, it creates custom chains within the IP table system. Uh, let's start our analysis with uh, the built-in pre-routing chain uh, used by all incoming packets. Um, it contains a rule that triggers a jump to the kube services chain. Uh, this is a top-level chain containing records related to individual service instances. Um, when a given flow with a destination IP address equal to the virtual IP address of one of the existing uh, cluster IP services and a destination port equal to that service port hits a matching rule, a jump to another chain is triggered. This is a chain dedicated to that service. Um, the name of such a chain always starts with the uh, cube SVC prefix. Uh, for each service, a separate chain is created. Um, at this point, uh, it is defined how the traffic related to a given service will be load balanced. Um, also here, the next level of, chain, of chains is triggered. Uh, these chains are dedicated to the endpoints of a given service. Uh, they all have the cube sap prefix. Um, each of them contains a rule that uses destination NAT to alter the virtual IP of the service with the IP address of the selected endpoint. Uh, each time a new connection to a given service is to be established, a jump to a different chain is made and a different service endpoint is selected. Um, the load balancing mechanism is based on the statistic module available in the IP tables uh, which selects one of the uh, available rules based on statistical conditions. Um, how about requests coming from the outside? Um, they hit the last rule in the cube services chain. Uh, this is because the destination IP address in such flows is equal to the IP address of the selected node in the cluster. Uh, such a pattern therefore matches destination type local in the mentioned rule. Uh, this in turn triggers a jump to a chain called cube node ports dedicated to handling external connections. Uh, then, uh, when uh, the destination port in the incoming request matches the port configured for one of the node port service instances, that flow hits the rule added for it. Uh, then, a jump to the chain dedicated to the corresponding cluster IP service takes place. Uh, so we finally get to the same place, but in a slightly different way. Uh, so far, we have analyzed what happens within custom chains triggered from the pre-routing chain. Uh, here, the most important operations from the Kubernetes services implementation perspective are load balancing and destination net. Um, it's also good to know that in addition to destination net, source net is also performed. Uh, when? Uh, this is only the case for external traffic handling and therefore only for the node port and load balancer services. Uh, for intra-cluster communication, source net is not involved. Um, so let's consider the following situation. 
uh, the Noteport service has been configured for a certain group of work workloads running in a cluster. Uh, let's assume that at a certain point in time, the load balancing for a given request coming from an external client was performed exactly as shown in the figure. Um, the client sent the request with its own IP address as the source address and the IP address of node 2 as the destination address. Uh, after reaching the node 2, uh, the endpoint for the configured node port service was selected based on the load balancing that was performed. Uh, it turned out to be a pod running on the node 1. Uh, here the destination NAT took place. Uh, node 2's IP address has been replaced with the pod's IP address. Uh, then, based on the configuration of the routing table on node 2, uh, the next hop for the traffic was determined. Uh, it turned out that uh, the pod's IP address belongs to the subnet reachable by node 1. Uh, thus, the flows left node 2 and were sent towards node 1. Uh, before that, however, source NAT is performed. Uh, the source IP address in outgoing pa packets, um, meaning the client's IP address, has been changed to the IP address of node 2. Uh, what we have discussed here uh, is the default behavior of the cluster nodes when routing service-related traffic coming from the outside. Uh, however, it should be clearly stated that a situation where the original source IP address of the client is not preserved uh, is generally problematic uh, and may cause some difficulties. Um, is it possible to somehow prevent this? Uh, yes, it is. Uh, what you have to do is to use the external traffic policy field within the service specification and assign it a value equal to local. Uh, source NAT will not be executed in such a case and the client source IP address will be preserved. Um, of course, you can only use uh, this field for the node port and load balancer services. Um, it doesn't make sense for cluster IP services. Um, the default value for this field is cluster and uh, you don't need to configure it, uh, configure it explicitly. Um, now let's uh, look at the differences between uh, these two scenarios at the kube proxy configuration level. Uh, let's start with the default settings where uh, external traffic policy is equal to cluster. Um, as we know, uh, in the aforementioned kube node port chain, uh, there are matching rules based on destination port value configured for node port services. Um, there's a set of two rules for uh, each such service. Uh, we have already discussed one of them. Uh, it contains a jump to a chain related to a given service instance. Uh, note, however, that uh, it is preceded by another rule that contains a jump to a chain named uh, cube mark mask. Uh, each packet going there is marked using a special mechanism available in the IP table system. Um, when external traffic policy is set to local, um, the same happens. Uh, there is one important difference, however. Uh, only locally generated requests to services go to the cube mark mask chain. Um, all others don't and are therefore not marked. Uh, but why does that matter? Um, to understand this, let's now look at what is happening at the built-in post-routing chain. Um, here we see a jump to a custom chain called cube post-routing. Um, packets that have not been marked leave this chain immediately. And this is the case where external traffic policy is set to local. Uh, on the other hand, when it is set to cluster, source NAT is performed, as you can see, uh, packets that have been marked are masqueraded. Uh, setting external traffic policy to local is very useful uh, if you really want to preserve the client's original IP address in the request coming from the outside to work that's running in the cluster. Uh, however, um, be aware that applying this configuration for your service has an impact on how load balancing for the service is performed. Um, what does that mean? Uh, it means that traffic coming from the outside can only be handled locally by, by service endpoints running on the same node uh, to which each given service request arrives. Uh, endpoints running on other cluster nodes cannot be used to serve it. 
Um, moreover, um, if the request comes to a node in the cluster that does not have any service endpoints running, that node becomes something of a black hole. Um, now let's see how this is reflected in the kube proxy configuration. Uh, let's start with a case where at least one endpoint is running uh, on the node where the request arrives. Um, this is a very similar configuration to the one uh, we discussed uh, earlier. Uh, finally, um, one of the locally available endpoints is selected and destination NAT is performed. Uh, the configuration looks different when there are no such local endpoints on the node. Um, when this happens, the last rule in a chain dedicated to a given service triggers a jump to the chain named cube mark drop. Uh, there, the appropriate marking of the packets is done. Uh, however, uh, a different value and mask for this operation is used uh, compared to the previously discussed marking case for masquerading. Um, it is also very important to note that uh, due to the lack of a local endpoint, no destination NAT is performed, so the destination IP address in the packet does not change. Uh, this, in turn, uh, means that after leaving the pre-routing chain, it will not reach the forward chain uh, nor post-routing chain, as was the case for the previously discussed configurations. Uh, instead, such a packet will be directed to uh, local processing and it will reach the input chain. Uh, there, uh, in the filter table, a jump to the cube firewall chain is made. Uh, it contains a rule that drops packets marked with a value and mask matching those specified for the cube mark drop chain. Uh, this is exactly what is happening in this case. Uh, we already know how the external traffic policy option uh, works and uh, what its use leads to depending on one of the two available modes, cluster and local. Um, now let's take a look at the pros and cons. Uh, the cluster mode uh, offers better service load balancing than the local mode. Uh, all existing service endpoints can be used to handle incoming requests. Uh, but the source IP address of the external client sending requests to the service is not preserved. Um, this is because source NAT is being performed in the cluster mode. Uh, also, uh, unnecessary hops between cluster nodes may be present when serving external traffic coming into the cluster. Uh, such issues are not the case for the local mode, uh, but others appear in their place. For example, uh, service-related traffic may be imbalanced within the cluster. Uh, also, external requests to services may be routed to uh, black hole nodes. However, uh, there are ways to mitigate those issues, at least to some extent, such as using uh, pod anti-affinity rules uh, to spread out pods acting as service endpoints uh, across as many nodes in the cluster uh, as possible. Uh, besides external traffic policy, there is another option called internal traffic policy. Uh, as you can probably guess, it concerns the configuration of services for requests coming from inside the cluster instead of outside. Uh, it also has two configuration modes, uh, the default cluster and local. Uh, when set to local for a given service, a request originating from a specific node in the cluster can only be handled by service endpoints running on the same node, uh, if there are any. Uh, otherwise, in practice, it is not possible to consume the service locally uh, on that node, even if it does have endpoints running on other nodes. Uh, to use the internal traffic policy option, just uh, add such a field to a given service specification and set it to local or cluster, um, the cluster value is the default one, so you don't need to specify that explicitly uh, if you want to use that mode. Um, in this video, I have shown in detail how Kubernetes services work and how they are implemented at the kubeprox level. Uh, you can modify their behavior using two available options within the service specification. Uh, the external traffic policy option uh, allows you to define how the request coming from outside the cluster will be handled. And the internal traffic policy concerns the handling of internal requests. Both of, the of these options can operate in two modes. Uh, the first is cluster and it is the default mode. 
Uh, using it provides optimal load balancing for services within the cluster. Uh, however, for external requests, the actual client uh, source IP address is not visible to the workloads that handle the request, which can be a problem in some cases. Uh, the local mode can be thought as a something like a special mode. Uh, using it provides the lowest latency, but um, it comes at the expense of load balancing quality. Uh, in some cases, it may also result in the uh, local availability of the service. Uh, to conclude, the choice between the cluster and local modes depends on the use case and deciding which functional aspects of the Kubernetes services are most important to you. Thank you.